All right, I'm going to analyze this gentleman's video here. He made this a day ago, and um, he's talking about the thousand-year reign of Christ, which is not in the Bible, but I'm going to just do about five minutes of this. I might end up doing, I might end up analyzing the whole thing just because it's very important, but um, let's listen to what he has to say. I'm going to do today. I always had wondered, you know, I heard people talk about the millennial kingdom, you know, when Jesus comes to rule for a thousand years. All right, first of all, the Bible never mentions this idea of Jesus reigning a thousand years. It's not in the Bible, it's not in Revelation 20, it's not anywhere in the Bible at all. Okay? Just so we're clear about that. Shall reign with him. And then of course. Uh, Jesus reigns forever. Alright keep that in mind. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. In his kingdom there is no end. So this false teaching. This is not something that people are reading the Bible and learning and pondering this is something that they're learning from somebody else they're learning this from man and not the Bible all right and now when you're hearing this think about uh, you know he's gonna talk about how great it's gonna be when the Lord Jesus Christ comes and he's right but the the ref or the the insinuation, if you will, is that this is going to come to an end. This is only a thousand year period. And then also let me uh, suggest this for you. Uh, if Jesus is not reigning in your life right now, how can you rightly claim to be saved? So it's going to be a thing going to be great. Nobody ever, ever gives in details what it's going to be like then. That's what I'm going to do right now. It's about the millennial kingdom. When Jesus comes back to reign, and it's going to be like paradise. Okay. But, it's only going to be a thousand years, so enjoy it while it lasts, according to these people. There's been a lot of talk about the day of the Lord. When he, that's when he comes back to reign for a thousand years. But the Bible never says Jesus reigns a thousand years. It's not in Revelation 20. It's not anywhere. There's little said on what it'll be like during that thousand years. What I'm about to show you here through the scriptures is what they had to say about life during that time. It's going to be completely new in a different era in the life of mankind. Be a world united for the first time in history. It's a time in the history that man, a man that we can only dream about in our present day. Now, let's go ahead and explore the scriptures. We're going to start with Isaiah 11:6. The wolf shall also dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. And the calf and the young lion and fatling together, and a little child will lead them. The natural instinct of being a predator will vanish, as well as the fear of predators. All animals will live together in peaceful harmony. A human child will become as a shepherd and lead any animal without fear of being harmed. Isaiah 11:7. And the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. All meat-eating predators will become vegetarians. And their offspring shall play together. As well as sleep together. Isaiah 11, 8. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the ass. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. 
babies as well as toddlers will be able to play around poisonous snakes without fear of being bitten. There will be no harm in any animal in existence at that time. Why will these harmful creatures become docile? Isaiah 11, 9. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Every living creature on this planet will know the Lord. The animals, as well as people, will be full of the spirit of knowledge and know that the Lord Jesus created all of us. Not, not even the animals will want to do anything that will cause the wrath of the Lord to come upon them. Okay, the scriptures have shown us that the Lord's return will have a huge impact on all animal life. This is only the beginning and many changes that will come about when the Lord returns to reign on earth. What else will happen during this time? Okay, Isaiah 35, 1. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose. Even the earth itself will rejoice when the Lord returns to reign. The earth will be cleansed from all violence and bloodshed. The deserts and wilderness places shall become fertile, and blossom with all kinds of plant life. The wilderness being glad and the desert rejoicing makes one wonder if the earth is actually alive. <laughs> Does it seem odd to you that the earth itself will change and be happy when our Lord returns to reign? Hmm. Let's go on. Isaiah 35, 5. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. During the reign of Christ, every person on earth will be healed from any and all diseases and physical infirmities. The millennial reign of our Lord will begin with every person on earth in perfect health. And You notice he's reading something. He's not reading from the Bible. He's reading somebody else's doctrine. Perfect physical bodies. Isaiah 35, 6, 7. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and the streams in the desert. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. In the habitation of dragons, where each lay, will be grass with reeds and rushes. Again. The physically impaired will be healed of all infirmities. All deserts and wilderness areas of the world be, will become lush and fertile ground with an abundance of vegetation. Springs and streams will come from the ground throughout the entire world. The earth will become like it was in the Garden of Eden. Once again. Isaiah 60 Okay, hold on. I'm gonna <clears throat> excuse me. I'm gonna end it right there, but I might do a part two. I got, I got to go. But uh, this is interesting because what he's describing is the world to come, which never ends. It's when we are transformed from our corruptible bodies into our incorruptible bodies. It is when there is no more pain, no more sorrow, no more crying, and no more death. All right, this is not a thousand year period. This is everlasting life. All right, it's, and the one thing that these guys, I haven't I haven't watched anything beyond this, but one of these, you know, the, the one thing that these guys refuse to talk about because they can't is this idea of what happens when the thousand years is over, according to their, you know, comic book, sci fi, uh, zombie vision, you know, what happens when Jesus stops reigning? and there's no more peace and there's you know the end of uh, you know paradise is over what happens then and you can't even claim that to be uh, 
everlasting life. You can't. It's it doesn't make any sense at all. And just in case you don't know my views on this, I'm telling you, all of this is talking about the things that are happening right now. When the devil is loosed, what's it say? It says he gathers together the unsaved. All right, and then what happens? Fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. This is while we that are saved are up in the air, our enemy is gathered at our feet, and they are destroyed. All right, this is again. This is the you know what we what he read in uh, Isaiah, I believe it was, where the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. This is when Jesus comes in his great white throne and judgment is given. And the judgment is the separation of the saved and the unsaved. The saved are lifted up in the air. The unsaved are gathered at our feet. And fire comes down from heaven and devours them all. And then what he's talking about, and which is something that probably doesn't get talked about enough, is what happens after the return of our Lord Jesus Christ and uh, there's a lot of great stuff in it it's very interesting uh, and we can take comfort in knowing that a better world waits for us okay so I'll probably continue this uh, later on